At Money 2020, number one subject was PSD2 and open banking. We are in the Netherlands and we're not ready. We're one of the countries where the law has not been passed. The, the banks don't have to open up their bank accounts for fintech. But where do they do it? In the country which is leaving us in Europe, in England, in the UK. So this is uh, the ING Yold, and um, that is the first one who basically p implemented PSD2, yeah? Yes, yeah, uh, the first TPP that were live in the UK. So you'll see there's no passwords. Why is that? Well, it's Face ID, it's much oh, better. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, I mean, I can see, um, you can actually see, apparently I've got 12,000 pounds left to spend. I don't believe that's actually the case, but I'm fairly sure. But it, it shows me- Then the uh, standard wouldn't really yeah, work yeah, well yeah, that yeah. well, but- So yeah, it, yeah, it shows me, uh, you know, how, uh, what, what my bills are, what my spend is like, what merchants, what I've spent money on. Yeah. You know, in, in You're connected to all of them. And it's connected to all of them, yeah. So it, it actually connects, I can connect multiple accounts. So here I've got, um, you can see a Lloyd's account and a Monzo account. Yep. And I can add other accounts from any um, any of the UK banks. I can add other accounts. I mean, there's a very long list of them. And I'm talking to Chris Michael. He is the head of technology from the Open Banking Association, a foundation. It's a non-profit, but with a powerful stick in their hand. And you, what does, be, what does the open banking, uh, what, do, what does it do? So we do a number of things. I mean, we, we are, first of all, a standards body. So we are creating um, a standard for open banking initially for the UK, but it's now a, a full PSD2 standard. So it's open. Anyone in the world can take that standard and adopt it. In the third revision already, right? Yeah, we're, we're just about to publish our third version in August, end of August. So we've, we've learned a lot so far. But we're also an implementation entity. So... Our job is to make sure that the standard gets implemented by the banks and adopted by the TPPs yep. and to kind of help the whole ecosystem smooth things out. Yeah. Let's compare it with the Netherlands. There, basically, the law has not been passed. The, the Dutch Central Bank is ready, but they haven't opened uh, yet the, the, the possibility to get a license yet because there is no law, there is no license. And the standards body is at the Payment Association, who are, is a voluntarily organization without any stick or also without any money. How did you get funded? I mean, you have more than 100 people working in that open yes. banking. How is it funded? So it's funded by the nine biggest banks, the Competition and Market Authority, the CMA. Yep. Um, set out a CMA order, which uh, UK law, which required the nine biggest banks to fund this implementation. Pony up the money. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So first, you, they basically got in the they got the money, and then secondly, if they don't want to participate in opening up and uh, and and they disappoint you terribly, what 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 kind of uh, things can you do? Yeah, well, it's so it's not us. We um, but the the UK government has a pretty big stick. So the first thing is that obviously all banks are required because under PSD2 all banks are required to open up yep. the nine biggest banks the CMA9 yep. are required to actually adopt our standard which in some ways makes it easier because they can all go uh, open up in the same way yep. um, and the third thing is that the UK government has set some pretty strict deadlines for them so our deadlines came earlier we had a first deadline in the 13th of January and not all of the nine banks were ready when they should have been, so some of them got into quite a lot of trouble. They were under something called directions. But ultimately, yes, the, the banks have to deliver, otherwise they are not compliant with the CMA. Order. So the English and the, and the British always complain terribly about all these European horrible standards and about you know, the, the fuss of the, of the bananas which have to be done. But if it comes to implementation of the standards, you're uh, number one. Well, yeah, I mean, we're, we're, it's not easy, though. Yeah, when we, we've, we've But, I mean, there is also pressure and force and systems yes. and processes, and it is not left to chance, and you are basically going there. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, open banking in the UK is opening up, and the banks are almost ready. When can Facebook then basically get to all the, uh, all the nine biggest uh, English banks? Well, anyone can do that now. We have 22 TPPs, I believe 22 live in the market now, okay. who are connected to the banks, not all connected to all of them. But anyone who, ha anyone who has a PSD2 role can, uh, uh, can passport into the UK and can, in, you know, if they've got a... And in, of those 22, is Facebook and Google there? Not yet. Are they, are they talking to you? Are they interested? Because they would be, of course, interesting parties to, to connect uh, so that I have a nice dashboard view of all my banks. Yeah, we have had, we have, they have been sort of on the periphery of discussions. I can't say, you know, who's kind of about to come in. Um, so the, the 22 that have got a license, you can see on the FCA website, that's public. And on our website, we publish more information about Give me them. a big name which I would recognize. 
well, actually, the first uh, the first TPP to go live in the UK was Yolt, which is actually an ING bank uh, TPP. So you know, that's, that's hey, the Dutch were the first. Yeah, <laughs> the exactly, Dutch were yeah, the yeah. first to connect to the di yeah. to the banks. Okay, Yolt, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there, there another one. Um, so I mean, there there there, there are some um, quite a few smaller ones. There are some very very big ones coming though. Some of the big accounts packages, because obviously business accounting is 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 a core use case. Um, some of the very, very big technology companies, some of the ones more than like what? mentioned are coming. I, I can't mention names of people are coming, but the really big ones, the really big ones are just... There is enough to, interest in uh, yeah, PSD2 yeah, yeah. to it's, open it's up. Coming, yeah. Okay, now, one thing I was really worried about, that the standards were going to be so complex and so painful that... I want to have a nice, I want to, in my favorite accounting package, I want to have access to all my bank accounts and I want to initiate payments. Yeah. And then, I, of course, I do not want to use every different kind of calculator for every different banks. I would just want to put in yeah. 400 uh, uh, transactions ready, have one way to verify them and put my digital signature on them, and then they have to go to all the banks. Do they accept each other's uh, you know, um, uh, dig digital signature? Yes, yes. I mean that's a core. I mean that's a core requirement that um, that banks and third parties have to accept each other's digital signatures as long as they've got a um, a PSD2 role, so as long as they're regulated. So it ensures that only regulated parties can trade in this ecosystem, and everyone has got surety about who they're talking to. And when you said it's difficult, the the key thing is it should not be difficult for the consumer, and that's the role of the third parties and the fintechs. They are. That's what they're good at. They're good at creating great user experience, creating great applications. And by the way, a third party, a fintech, as Yolt have proved, doesn't have to be, um, you know, it, it can be part funded or it can be set up by a bank as well. So it's a, it, you know, it's a great sort of uh, paradigm and a great ecosystem that I think we're building. So how long do you think it will take before I have one as a consumer, so not as a business with an accounting package, but as a consumer, that I can have a nice one uh, dashboard with all my bank accounts and you know, from that dashboard also initiate payments. So I never ever have to go to those horrible internet, uh, you know, de internet environments from the bank, which basically are not the most pleasable uh, way to work with. Yeah, so um, I mean, the From a technical perspective, of course. So, yeah, for, so some of that you can do now with apps like Yolt I mentioned. They're not doing payments yet. I believe they will be doing it. What Yolt it's more than 22. Yeah, yeah. So what, what Yolt do is they connect to... Um, no, the, the, these aren't the 22. These are all the banks. So it's the CMA9, but it's also other banks. Yeah. Um, and it's also credit cards. So not all of this is open banking. So Yolt have a hybrid model. So they have to make direct connections to all these different uh, all these different places. Yeah, it's either direct connections or, or screen scraping. It's a. Uh, and they cannot initiate payments yet. Not yet. No. It's dashboard. Yeah, it's it's a it's a dashboard. It does things predictive analytics. It tells you if you're about to run out of money or, you know, what what you what you've got to spend and what you, where you're spending your money. It's a money management platform. Yeah. Is it a good uh, handy app? Yeah, it's very good because I I. Because obviously I'm in this space, I shouldn't say this. I have about ten different bank accounts. I I haven't connected them all yet, but I you know it helps me because I've got different accounts and I you know it's the only way I can get a it's the only way I can securely get. I'd a love to have that in the Netherlands too. Okay, thank you. Um, that so is a one thing which is essential. Are there other things which I can only do inside the environment of the bank instead of uh, at the dashboard uh, view? Yeah. So the the most obvious thing is that PSD2 only has payment enabled accounts in 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 Europe. It doesn't cover things like pensions or savings or investments. No, but my savings account also, because I need, I, of course, I want to get money from my savings account to the yeah. other one. Do they not open them up? Do the banks close them? If, if it's a payment-enabled savings account, then, which not all are, then they have to. If it's not a payment-enabled savings account, it's not a strict requirement. No, but do the, banks, uh, do the banks do it anyway? Or what well, is your experience? I, so at the moment, the, gen the general sort of view that I've got is that the banks are, it's been hard work for them. They, ha they, you know, some, they have some legacy technology issues and you know, lots of compliance and process. So this is hard for the big banks. Yeah. So the general impression I have is that they're not doing stuff right now over and above the bare minimum that they have to do, but many of them want to do a lot more. It's a question of timing. You know, they want to do it and also potentially co uh, um, revenue. So if there are things that banks don't have to do for free under PSD2, Many of them want to do it, but they might want to offer and charge. Okay. Th that's fine. I, I don't mind uh, paying for it a little bit more to yeah. get that kind of service. But for example, joint accounts. 
Is that part of the uh, PSD2? Yeah, whether it's a joint account for a consumer, like husband and wife or whatever, or whether it's a business account where you've got more than one signatory, absolutely, yes, that is in okay. scope. So savings is not included, but joint account is. Are there other obvious things which a consumer, a consumer would need which is not included in PSD2? Um, well, I think there are, um, there are things that go above and beyond just financial services, so energy, healthcare, other things that... I know that's not the topic here, but there are other things that where this whole concept of it's not just open bank, it's open everything. I think that's the big picture. That's, but the reason that's potentially relevant is... I just want to know, why would I have to go to my bank, uh, my internet environment from my bank? You know, I have to go there for my savings, but I don't go there very often. So is there any other reason why I would have to go in there? Um, I think that's, I mean, that's the end game that we want to get to. I think it will be some time before that becomes ubiquitous that you know, every, people never need to go into their banking account or app. There are some things that banks can do maybe better. There are, you know, I think there are things like just setting up an account, adding another user, things that aren't you know, more the administration side of the account, yeah. which is more relevant maybe for a business. Yeah, but that's a hundred times. Well, maybe you're setting up an account for my kids or something like that yeah. or having access to that. Okay, but I mean, at the end of the year, at the end of the year, those products will be available so that I can, if I really don't want to, don't have to go to my banks anymore. The bank is on the background being a pipe and performing a very useful function, but I never have to go to the front end anymore. Well, I think to get ultimately to get there, it's not the end of this year, but it will be maybe PSD3, which you know is, is probably the next, the next iteration. Is that 2025? I don't know. How fast is this going, this technology? Is it really revolutionary? Is it really, you know, you say they are, have pain. It takes them pain to and to do that, and they have to work really hard. Is this really a big step, or is it a small step to a to a greater future? Um, I think it's it's it is difficult for them. Um, I think there is one potential um, sort of outcome of this, which this may be an opportunity for some of the bigger banks to re-platform to look at re, re you know redoing their whole kind of end-to-end -end stack because you know, some of them are still using technology that's 40 years old. Um, and maybe some banks are really good at yeah, that. Some, okay. some of the smaller banks and some of the technology companies here are much better. Services, they've got much better, you know, cloud-based systems. It's uh, it's easier to integrate APIs into. So yeah, I, it is difficult, but technology is moving really quickly, and there are lots of great technology companies here who've got really interesting services. So okay, let's let's look at that in the future. There. Well, last question. Yeah. You're now the first one to be ready. You know, really, you have moved far ahead and that kind of stuff. And now you're leaving the European uh, community. Is PSD2 staying? Or is now the regulation, the regulation from the, the whole financial industry, is it going to be completely their own way uh, with, uh, with this Brexit? Is it an opportunity for the financial world in, uh, or is it an, uh, a pain in the butt? Well, uh, obviously, it, you know, in many ways, it doesn't help what's happening with Brexit. But, you know, I think open bank is a global thing. I think it's not just about PSD2 in Europe. You know, other markets, Australia, Japan, are looking at adopting open banking, you know, either looking at or starting to. So really, I think you need to think about this as a global, a global thing. I think Europe will be a really, the UK and then Europe will be a really good test bed for this. Um, and ultimately, Brexit shouldn't matter. I'm sure it will make, in, in terms of open banking, I'm sure it will cause some challenges. But, open, you know, PSD2 and GDPR, I, I hope, are here to stay. All right, somebody who's not worried yet about Brexit, who, uh, it's not exactly an opportunity. I'm not worried. <laughs> you say you're not worried. Oh, he is worried, okay. So, but he is, he's moving at a fast pace. Come on, Netherlands, pass that law. Also, get us that, uh, get us that PSE2 because we really need it as consumers and as businesses.